Welcome to the Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Atchison. Our show is authentic, honest, and it's trusted because everything's connected. Many thanks to those who've supported the show. It's deeply appreciated. It allows us to carry on our work and we hope others join too. If you'd like to help the show, go to thedennisreport.ca and click on PayPal or Patreon. Today I sat down with two young ladies, Dylan Whiteman and Avery Goodfellow. They're in their late teens entering into their next transition in their lives. Oftentimes media don't speak to this age group. And if they do, it'll be shrunk down to 10 seconds or 15 seconds or a line or two in a print article. But today you get to listen to their thoughts, their feelings, their profound insights. We started off by talking about TikTok. And away we go. So let's talk TikTok then. Let's yeah. start there, okay? <laughs> so, okay, I'm old. I don't get it. <laughs> so what, what do you do? Do they last 10 seconds, 2 seconds? Like So there's like a variety you can pick from. There's like like three second TikToks. Like you can make it as long as you want. I think they just made a new update where you can make it like up to like 10 minutes or something. Yeah. yeah. So it's like doing a video. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. So how it used to be up to three minutes, but now it's like yeah. So how many have you done? Um, I've done like a fair amount, I'd say. <laughs> like <laughs> maybe 11, 12 yeah. that are like posted. Yeah, so you do them and you don't post them if you don't like them? Sometimes, <laughs> a lot of the time. Yeah. I've got like a hundred in like the drafts. Yep. Oh yeah, all right. And I mean, I've seen you guys do a couple and you're dancing around looking goofy yeah. or, or posing, <laughs> like just posing stuff. Yeah. So is, is that more or less what people do? Um, yeah, there's like a variety. Like, um, you can either do like dancing ones or singing ones or, um, just like talking there's cooking ones. ones like oh, yeah. people like showing you how to do things like house renovations like there's lots oh. of different things yeah like diy so it's all not just being goofy or foolish yeah no, some of them are actually really cool huh ah. yeah you guys have a favorite one you did mm, my, <laughs> mine the one that i got like over like seven hundred thousand views or something on seven hundred thousand not 700? No, 700,000. Do I dare ask, what did you do? <laughs> <Don't ask. laughs> uh, My mom was in it. <laughs> it was one of, like, I posted it during one of, like, our basketball games, like, right before it. And then afterwards, I was like, wow, like, a lot of people are watching this right now. <laughs> and it was pretty crazy. And, but what did you do? It was, like, it was one of the, like, at, like, on TikTok, you have, like, trends. So there's, like, videos that are, like, super, like... Like, a lot of people are making, like, the kind of, like, the same concept or whatever. Okay. It's, like, super trendy. And I just, like, did one of those. And I was, like, dancing, and then my mom was dancing in it, and it was really funny. Okay. Yeah. The ones I've seen, somebody does something, and then it cuts real quick. And then they're, like, they've changed their clothes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that cut thing. Yeah, so I'm like standing doing this, poop, poop, and now I'm in my bathing suit. Nope, now I'm in my yoga clothes. Nope, now I'm in my yeah. pajamas. Yeah, that was really popular, like, like... Last year, I would say, mm -hmm. like, big transitions were, like, really popular, but now yeah. it's more, like... Yeah. Now it's more, like, subtle. Like, you can do transitions, but it's, like, they're kind of more subtle. Yeah. In the jock world, maybe they're TikToks, and I just haven't caught on. They, uh, trick shots. You know, so you see people chucking a basketball from oh, 50,000 yeah. feet, and it goes in? Yeah. Would, would that... Fit or did they yeah. actually make that shot? Sometimes, sometimes they actually can make those shots, but some a lot of the time it's just like, like they cut, cut it, it, yeah, and yeah. edit it. <laughs> to but make like it look I like feel like most of the time when they like cut and like edit it, like they make it clear that that's what they did. Like they yeah. cut it and like try to make it like more funny. Okay. Yeah. Like small t smaller channels would do that. Like if you didn't have like thousands of followers, you yeah. might like take a video of you like shooting a basketball and then like flip to it like the net being like this big and like a tiny ball is dropping something yeah. like that just oh to be my. funny i guess so just to wander into sort of related to that so do you guys can you guys tell what's real or what's not real because mm, sort of can. in the older world the old person's world there's a lot of 
fuss nowadays about, well, that's not true or that's fake news or, oh, they've played with that video, you know. So you guys, having grown up with this since day one, can you tell what's real and what's not real? Or does it even matter? I think it, I think like, it sometimes matters. it's really, like, like, they were talking a lot about, like, I think I saw a video the other day where it's, like, video editing. And it's, like, showing, like, people's bodies images. And, like, they literally, they, like, edit their bodies during the video. And you're, like, whoa, like, people look like that. But then they go back and, like, you don't look like that at all. Yeah. So it's, like, it just creates this, like, I don't know. It just, in it makes the stereotype that oh if you don't look like this you're not going to get this many likes or this many follows and it's like harder for like younger kids to like be like oh well it's fake so i can look like this and still get as many likes and follows it's really crazy how like people can like edit their videos yeah it's like wow it used to be called photoshop where you'd have a print photo and you could airbrush all the defects out you know yeah now it's like there's like video edit and Mm -hmm. Facetune, yeah, and, like, so, so many, many things. things. So, like, they can alter your image. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so, but does it matter if it's real or not real, or can you tell? Does, or if you can tell, how is it you can tell that no, this is wrong or this is fake, and no, this one looks real. I think it does matter. Can think, we, or can we yeah. teach people? You know, can you give them a crash course? Like, look for this, look for this. Like, I don't know if it's I don't like know. That. I'd, I'd like. Especially in pictures, you can tell more if they've been edited, like if they their bodies have been edited, just like looking around yeah. like their surroundings, hmm. if they look altered, like it's probably been like fixed to look a certain way. Yeah. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and does it get them all those likes if that's the measure or views or hits or whatever? I don't think, like, Not honestly, really. they probably would get the same if they didn't, but yeah. it just makes them feel better to post it on the internet when mm. they look different. Yeah. Or, like, better. Yeah. Define better, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, so, who do you guys, do you follow anybody in that world? Like, how much does the social media world um, take into your day-to-day life? Because there's all kinds of studies that show your age group with screen time and they're holding the phone like, eh. Mm. Uh, is that good or bad? Or are they just doing studies for the sake of doing studies? Um, does it affect your world a whole lot? Is reality in that little device or is reality around you? Wander into that space a bit. I think I'm on my phone way more than I'd like to admit. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing how much I'm on my phone. I honestly wish I could like take a step back and like not. <laughs> At the same time, it's like how all my friends communicate you know so it's really hard to like not be on your phone and like not like if snapchat like all my friends communicate on that so it's really hard to like not be on snapchat because that's how i talk to everybody yeah and especially like during covid that was like the only way you could talk to your friends like Mm -hmm. i have like friends who don't live here too so Mm -hmm. it's like that's how i communicate with them and like talk to them but it's also like when it was covid and lockdown i couldn't just go over to my friend's house and be like hey guys like let's hang out because yeah like that wasn't allowed yeah what was covid like for you guys sucked yeah yeah, it sucked (laughs) i feel like my whole high school experience is like (laughs) gone (laughs) yeah because like we got one year of like normal the normal high school experience but all the the grade nines coming in now this is their normal yeah which is crazy so if it does go back to how it like was before it's just I think that's going to be weird to them, but it's going to be like, oh, this is how it used to be Yeah. for, like, us, but, like, we're graduating, so. <laughs> kind of, like, I, probably, I think we're getting, like, a normal prom this year, but. Yeah, which is mm. cool. Besides that, like, we missed a lot of school, like, this year. We had, like, yeah. the strike, which was two weeks. We had lockdown, which was two weeks, like, and, like, yeah. those odd days where they just, like, closed the school down for a day because there was a case or something. Yeah. Like, we missed a lot just because of, like, random things. So, yeah. like, I, even more than last year, I think we missed more than that. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. What was the worst part of it? Um, like, lockdown. Like, being alone. Yeah, lockdowns. Alone. Like, I love my family, but sometimes they're so annoying. Yeah. I can't even handle them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to stay do with you, them. Do you have your own space you could crawl into? To... Like, I have my room, but, like, sometimes yeah. you just want to, like, be in, like, a different... Like, I don't want to be in my room all the time. Like, I want to be in a different space, but then, like, my dad would be, like... My mom had to work from home. My dad had to work from home. Like, 
There yeah. were there was always like things you had to do, and you would, I had to be quiet. Like there were Zoom calls, and like my sisters would be in school, and I'd like have to be quiet, but like <laughs> trying to do something I wanted to do, and it was really difficult for me. Yeah. Yeah. In your house. Yeah, pretty much the same, uh, especially because uh, Jake just moved out. So, I on top of like already not having like people to talk to, and then like the only person in the house who was like my age, kinda, or in like that area left. So I was kind of like, oh, well, now what? Because, like, mom and dad don't really play video games. So, like, I don't really have anything to do. So that's when you made up your imaginary friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty exactly. much. Uh, which would be Snapchat, you know, because yeah. you stayed in touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wondered what that was like for you guys and for your age group because um, it's such an interesting time. The high school years, like there's all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff going on all the time. Yeah. It's like high frequency stuff. And all of a sudden, choo, no, we're flattening this beast right out. Yeah. It's like, so was there anything good that came out of it for you other than well-being or health? I would like to say I got a lot more sleep, but at the same time, like my sleep oh, schedule really? was so messy. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'd go to bed at like 5 a.m. and wake up at like, 3 p.m. Three, yeah. Like, it was insane. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I agree. Like, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. I definitely got closer with some of my friends who, like, I don't normally talk to on a day-to-day basis. But at the same time, it, it still was, like, it was hard to be, like, alone. Like, <laughs> To be Actually, talking to somebody, but to be alone. Like, yeah. one thing I noticed yeah. the most would probably be, like, it was, like, you really kind of found out who your actual friends were. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> you're sitting at home and, like, like, you're reaching out to people and being, like, hey, like, how is it going? But, like, there's some people that you thought were, like, your really close friends and, like, wouldn't even talk to you. Yeah. And it's, like, like whoa, like, maybe you don't actually like me as much <laughs> as I thought you did. Yeah, like, you thought you had this, like, this bond and then it's just kind of, like, eh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> things shift yeah yeah and both of you play multiple sports yeah Yeah. it really cut into that too didn't it just so did you i mean i would question if you guys were ever really in shape but (laughs) i would too yeah me too i'm with you on that one but you were in better shape than average so did did that get in did you feel that shift that you weren't in as good a shape as you you used to be like, you would, Definitely. like, go to practice and be like, hey, this is kind of nice. And then you'd be gone for two weeks and you'd have to go back to practice. And you're like, okay, I can't breathe anymore. Yeah, and you're, like, two minutes into warm-up and you're already, like, <gasps> dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, the obvious question for the jock was, did you put on weight? Or did know. you lose weight? Some people, um, when, when they are becoming active, they lose weight. And other people... Yeah. Are, no, their eating kicks up because they're taking the place of practice with eating. And it... I actually wouldn't know. I don't have a scale in my house, so like I don't weigh oh, myself. Uh, my weight fluctuated a lot, but it always has. Yeah. But it's like I'd gain weight and then I'd lose it like two days later, and then like I'd gain it back and then I'd yeah. lose it, and it depends was depends on like... what the meal is of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sliding back to the social part of all all of it, and and if it's uh, I don't want to be nosy. But I want to hear stories. So the dating world, because you guys start to emerge into the dating world. (laughs) But there's no social interaction other than through Snapchat, you know. And it's such a key time in high school to meet different people and have relationships shift backwards and forwards. And so without giving away any secrets, (laughs) but it's an important part of being, you know, an older teenager. What what was that like with trying to meet whoever you were interested in and it didn't work out or Snapchat doesn't do it or, you know, like, so dating couldn't have been normal yeah. in the last two years. Yeah. It couldn't have been. That's actually interesting. <laughs> um, when I first started talking to, I guess he's my ex-boyfriend now, um, Daniel, we started, we, we snapped, like we, on Snapchat, that's kind of like, I met him once before. But after that, we were, like, solely just, like, Snapchat and, like, talk on Snapchat because it was, like, the peak of lockdown. Like, it was right when everything started. So we didn't really, like, know each other. And we literally snapped for, like, two months or something before we hung out because, like, we, like, we, first of all, we couldn't hang out. And then, second of all, we were kind of probably too scared to hang out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not easy. (laughs) Yeah, but then, but, yeah, it was, like, it was, like, you had to snap and then eventually it was, like, it was, like, 
you have like this amount of people that you can hang out with, like your family bubble and like a couple other people. So then you have to choose and be like, well, is it really that important? Like right now, like I'm kind of just talking to him, like, do I want to not hang out with him for like the next month or like, do I want to try to like get him into that family bubble or whatever? So that was kind of challenging to like pick like who I wanted as a person to like hang out with it's almost like pre-selecting for Mm -hmm. something instead of just a random down the hallway at school you get to have the conversation yeah because it would happen naturally rather than structured (laughs) (laughs) what was it like for you Dylan um (laughs) it was definitely a challenge I think (laughs) like (laughs) (laughs) Um, Dylan's boyfriends are interesting yeah um I recently just got out of a relationship, too. Um, it wasn't... Yeah. I don't... We... <laughs> it was, like, when you meet somebody through a friend. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then we... Same with... As Avery. Like, we started talking over Snapchat. And then, like, we hung out. And then we started dating. And then, like, because of, like, lockdown, we could only talk over, like, FaceTime and everything. And it just got hard. And, like... Then the schoolwork started piling up, and everything was just piling up, and yeah. it was kind of like, mm, yeah. space. So, interesting. For what it's worth, when Betsy, my wife, and I met, it was almost the exact same thing, just not Snapchat. The uh, sliding back to school stuff, but with not everybody in school, it wasn't the same. The schools get a lot of attention on what people wear in school now. Uh, what's that like for you guys? Because I can remember two years ago, some young lady got a lot of attention because of wearing a shirt or a certain outfit. And then somebody said, you can't wear it. And then it got into, you can't tell me what to wear. And mm-hmm. off it went. Um, my day, it was simpler. You just jeans and a t-shirt and <laughs> you go, right? <laughs> it didn't get caught up in all these bigger or larger, seems larger issues. Yeah. You guys live right in the middle of it. Is it a pain in the butt? Is it something you don't even pay attention to? Um, do they have a point? I think it varies. Because, like, I'm working at a camp, it, and it is a Christian camp. So, like, the rules are, are very strict on, like, it has to be two fingers if you're going to wear a tank top. You can't wear a tank or, like, a cutout shirt that goes past here. You, like, don't show your bra. Like, things that, like, it's very much, like, you're shorts have to go down to your fingertips which is a difficult thing especially when you have long arms <laughs> when your reach is seven feet yeah. <laughs> exactly so it's like i don't know it it's hard because it's the person who's like in charge of the camp is also very old school and like those rules are pretty outdated for the people who are working at the camp mm-hmm. so that's kind of hard but then at school we don't really have a set dress code it's we more like, like do but like they don't yeah, really enforce they don't it. enforce it and it's, like, some people just don't feel comfortable wearing that kind of thing because of the attention they get from, like, classmates. Like, sure. And, like, other people who are just, like... There'd be some so guys and, and some girls, I would imagine, that would chirp about what you're wearing. With. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. I think we have, like, a dress code, but, like, I've never, like... I've seen people wear some pretty interesting things to school, and I've never, yeah. like, seen... I've never heard them been, like called the office or like told to put something else on so Mm -hmm. i don't find they really enforce it but places like when you need like shorts longer than your fingertips like i especially like if you have long legs even if they're longer than your fingertips they're still not going to think it's long enough and it's crazy exactly and like i don't know i think like some of those rules should change like you can't show your shoulders like that was what's up with my shoulders yeah it's like (laughs) why are they distracting you (laughs) yeah like i've had these conversations with my mom it's like what is so intriguing about somebody's shoulder especially like if they didn't have that rule like it wouldn't be a thing like it's not a thing until you sexualize it i find exactly and it's like like, it's a shoulder like come on it's not like anybody's showing anything like overly inappropriate it's it's just a body part everybody has it it's like like there's some rules that i can understand like i can get behind like no shorts that like cut off like past like a certain point yep. yeah that show off too much skin like i can get behind that it's just like i think if you want to wear it hey like i'm not gonna judge you for it because like that's not my place but it's like i could understand why people would be like mm, yeah no yeah. that's you guys live in an interesting space that way in an interesting space and time um, for what it's worth that also is nothing new 
um, the era of halter tops, hot pants, um, <laughs> jeans that are so tight that you got to peel them off. You know, like that's the late 60s and early 70s, and it cycles through. But in that era, it was more like your attitude, Dylan. It's like, okay, that's what you want to wear. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Nowadays, it, it can get you into trouble. It yeah. can, sometimes can get you arrested. Yep. It definitely gets you into an awful lot of arguments that there's no resolution to. Yeah. You know. So how do you live with all that? You just ignore it, or you just dip your toe in once in a while and go, "You guys should smarten up." That's that's not a deal. It's just a shoulder. Yeah. Well, I honestly just wear what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I wear what I want. If I feel like if it, if I feel comfortable in it, I don't think it should matter to anybody else hmm. what I'm wearing because it's not like it's not like my shirt is affecting Avery at all. Yeah. It's it's my think. shirt. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, to push it the other way, then have you ever had someone say, "No, you got to go change," other than your parents? <laughs> I don't think so, yeah. honestly. I've had have like you? I've had um, somebody who works at camp with me, like not like the director of camp, like just a staff member, be like, "I would change your shirt just because like that's showing a little too much." And it was one of the male staff members, so I was like, okay, "Well, why are you looking?" Here. Like it's like <laughs> it's that thing where it's like, but it's not. Yeah. Like, oh, actually, yeah, I did one time. One time I was doing, I did a co-op, which is, like, I went to an elementary school, and, like, I was basically, like, an assistant teacher, but, like, it's for, like, high school classes. Yeah, yeah. And I have really long legs. Like, my torso is kind of small, but my legs are really long. (laughs) And I was wearing this skirt, and it went past my fingertips, but I had some, like, male teacher come up to me or something and was, like... I don't know if male matters. Like, I don't know. If, it's just like, a little creepier when it's a guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, he came up to me, and he was like, that's, like, a little short. Like, maybe wear something longer tomorrow. And I was like, like, why, though? Like, it literally is, like, it was long about my fingertips. Yeah, exactly. I don't understand why it matters. Yeah, like, and I had worn this skirt, like, before, like, to the same spot, like, multiple times. So it was like, it was like, why are you mentioning it now? Yeah. Exactly. Fascinating how it gets to personal opinion or personal yeah. taste, and then yeah. that gets imposed on the bigger, yeah. bigger group, sort of. So, uh, so what would you guys be for? Just you know, laissez faire, let everybody do what they want to do, and everybody yeah. chill out a bit. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, I think there's like, there's like certain parts of your body you should not <laughs> cover, but like, like yeah, definitely. Like, one thing I don't understand though is why guys can walk around shirtless and girls can't. There, yeah. okay. I was gonna slide into the guy side if you didn't bring yeah. it in. So, do guys have inappropriate behavior? They're no. so boring, more or less. Guys dress yeah. boringly. It's t-shirts and jeans yeah, usually. Like, yeah, but we'll they have could... talks like, and it'll be like, girls don't wear this because it might be you know arousing for the guys and it's like why can't you just be like guys don't wear this because this might be arousing to the girls like especially like it's not those like is there anything a guy wears that would be (laughs) provocative well like in middle school we had this big like dispute or something because guys would wear little like tank tops and they'd be less than three fingers and all the the girls had to have more than three fingers so why were they allowed to wear those tank tops when we couldn't yeah or like those shirts that like like those cutout shirts that go like 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 they're not sports bra it's like it's like there will be guys who will have it like down to here showing up everything which is like fine like do what you want but then why can't we yeah it's like it's a sports bra it's not like it's like yeah yeah like we see these like around like and it's heavier than a bathing suit. Exactly. It's really. bigger and heavier and really. stronger. And, exactly. Uh, okay, so I was curious about the guy side of it or your guys' perception of the guy side of it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like if it's not going to be like, if girls can't do this, guys can't do this either. If girls can do this, guys can do this. Like, if it's not going to be like that type of like equal playing yeah. field, like, it's not fair. Like, yeah. I think anybody should be able to wear anything they want. And if you want to take off your shirt, that's fine. But if a girl does it, don't complain when she does it. Because that's just yeah. not fair. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, you guys might be stretching <laughs> stretching the universe a little well, bit. I mean, I like, I would, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, a girl <laughs> can just go take off her shirt. Well, yeah. I think that should be okay. <laughs> Like, yeah. personally, I wouldn't. But, like, like if no. a girl wants to, I think she should be able to do that. I think, like, if... like. <laughs> Let's say you're working out or going for a run, and there's a guy with his shirt off because it's hot out, and the girl takes off her shirt, but she has a sports bra on, so she's still covering all the parts that people are like, no. You know, I think that should be okay, and people shouldn't be like, oh, like, put a shirt on. 
Yep, makes sense. Like, there, there was a big fuss in Toronto about 20 years ago now about some young lady mm-hmm. decided if they can go shirtless, I'm going shirtless. Like yeah. word for word, the same kind of concept. Mm-hmm. And she did, and of course they had to change bylaws and all. It got into a big kerfuffle. Yeah. But wouldn't it be nice? It, it was simpler instead of more complex. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm. The uh, thanks for wandering into that because. Because all we get is like a story in the paper on the radio and it's like 200 words long and they barely touch on what it's like for you guys and it's always shaded a particular way. Yeah. Like, so few morality or moral high ground is more about just be who you are and respect each other's space and it should shake out. Is that, yeah. is that fair? I'd say so. Is that too yeah. ideal? I don't think I don't think that's much to ask for. Like... When you think about it, if you, all you're asking for is, like, a little respect for, like, one another, I think that shouldn't be too much to ask. I think like, that's bare minimum. Yeah. I think that's, like, <laughs> the least you can do is, like, Literally. give people, like, common courtesy. Yeah. Um, it leads to drawing attention, which sometimes leads to bullying and stuff. Yeah. But, but, I think, yeah, but people the, focus too much on brand names. Yeah. Like, oh, this person has, I don't know, like, Adidas something. Oh, but that, like, that's a no-name shirt, so that's kind of, like... I think it's not as much as, like, brand... Like, yeah, people focus on brand names, and if you have the money, mostly you'll go towards buying brand name Mm -hmm. things. I think where it really gets, like, if you wanted to bully someone for something, this is kind of when it happens, is if you get something, like a knockoff. Like, if you get a Nike shoe, like, if someone has a Nike shoe, let's say, like, an Air Jordan or something, and someone gets a knockoff of it, like... That's mostly when they'll get made fun of. Yeah. Because they're, like, trying to, like, just buy something different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't understand that because it's, like, it's a shoe. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand spending, like, hundreds of dollars on a shoe that's going to get dirty. Or it's going to get clean. Well, that's what everybody says. But it's, like, if you're walking around in the mud. Yeah. Like, (laughs) don't walk around in the mud. Well, I have to walk to school. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but have, having access to it, you know, because um, it does get into a bit of, not status conscious, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You guys represent one of the largest groups for spending money, oddly <laughs> enough, right? Because nice. the, the 14 to 20 year olds spend a fair amount of money. So yeah, you we'll get see. bombed, you get bombed with targeted advertising to buy stuff. Yeah, and works. not everyone has it. So it creates a <laughs> creates that big divide. So here's the latest phone. You gotta have the latest phone, that yeah. kind of thing. Does that create friction in a school, or is it still back to personal choice? Or personally, I could care less. Yeah, like if same. you have like, I don't know, like a, a flip iPhone. Phone. Yeah, <laughs> if you have a flip phone, go for it. Like that. How care. does that affect me? But like, I feel like for some people, it's like the idea that like, I don't know. They have to be better almost. But I find the funny thing is, is, like, they're not better. No. Like, it's their parents' money. Exactly. Like, you're not using, you're not working for that. You're not, like, yeah. Like I'm grateful for everything my parents give me, but, like, mm-hmm. I feel, like it's so awkward when people come to school and pretend, like, they're, like, this, like, super cool person because they have all this cool stuff. Like, you didn't yeah. buy that. Like, you didn't work for that. Yeah, like, people who are, like, oh, yeah, like, I have my own car. It's, like, no, actually, your parents bought you your own car. Yeah. It's, like... I don't know. I feel like there's something, like, satisfying about going shopping and knowing that you're spending your own money that you worked hard to earn. It's kind of painful, though. Oh, no, it's painful. Yeah. Like, when you see, like, all those zeros, you're like, okay. <laughs> kind of thing. But it's, like, I don't know. It's also, like, really satisfying to be, like, like I bought this with my money. Like, this yeah, is mine. That's like, true. Rather than being, like, oh, yeah, I can spend as much money as I want because mom gave me her credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Which she would never do. <laughs> but. I wish I yeah, yeah. do that. <laughs> so let's slide into where you work then. If you earn your own money, how do you earn your own money? Yeah, well, I'm a lifeguard, so I work at the Fredericton Indoor Pool. I used to work at the Y. I actually calculated up the hours it took for me to become a lifeguard, like the like the courses I did. And it was like over 100 hours just of like getting the courses you need before you can actually work as a lifeguard. Which sucks, because I don't get paid as much as people who work at the Irving right now. What do you get as a lifeguard? Uh, I think the starting rate is like twelve fifty or something. I think I get like thirteen twenty five now. 
And how many hours a week might you get? Oh, I only work one shift a week because I was playing basketball, but I think I'll pick up another two or three. Yeah. And did you lifeguard anywhere else in the summertime? Yeah, I work at Killarney in the summer, which is, like, super fun. It's, like, literally my favorite job ever. I love being outside. Like, you're outside all summer, and you get the nicest tan. You don't tan. I actually tanned in the <laughs> summer because I was outside every single day. <laughs> it wasn't a big tan, but it was something. Yeah. And Dylan, you had mentioned Green Hill Lake Camp. Yeah. Has that been a constant for you? Um, It's been three years working there. Um, I spent my first two summers... Like, this will be my third summer working, but I spent my first two summers volunteering just because I was playing football, like, during the summers as well. So, yeah. yeah. It's been, yeah. I've been going to camp since I was, like, really little, though. <laughs> like, so. I remember yeah. going to that camp. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like going to your second home, then. Yeah. Except for three fingers, two yeah. fingers. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. There's going to have to be, like, a couple of changes this year, for sure, in that area. But I have fun when I'm there, like, with all my... Like, the staff is, for the most part, really great. It's, like, it's a fun environment. Um, yeah. It, sometimes, though, it can be a little dramatic. Sure, you're dealing with but, people. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, especially, like, with, like, the younger, newer staff. That can be, like, a little difficult because it's, like... I don't know, I feel like they're trying to find their place, like, where they fit in on the staff team, and it's, like, it, it, I remember, like, my first year, like, working, it was hard to find, like, your clique kind of thing, yeah. like, your group, Yeah. Um. and, like, yeah, I don't know, I feel like that's, must be a challenge for, like, the new staff, but yeah. I have fun. Do you work during the school year? Um, No. <laughs> okay. So whatever you make in the summer has got to get you through pretty much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mom, it doesn't help you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, Sometimes. So, where I was trying to lead to is um, one of the challenges for your guys' age group is that you can't find summer work that pays you enough. It even makes a faint ding if you decide to go to university or community college, right? <laughs> yeah. Like You can't find enough hours or dollars in a summer job now to even take care of the first semester's tuition never mind yeah. the books and the rent and all that stuff unless you get like three jobs yeah and go to school yeah well that's that's not you know i'm 19 Ideal. years old and i'm running myself ragged right yeah any thoughts about that because you're in a transition coming you're ending one phase you're whatever the next phase will be is it going to be school or is it going to be do no school and just work for a while or is it going to be travel mm -hmm. or What's the future look like for you guys? Well, I think it's crazy. I'm going to university at UMB for kinesiology with a bachelor of science. And I want to go to med school after that. And my mom works at UMB, so I get half rate. Ah, that helps. It does help. But when you think about it, like I'm, I'm working still all summer, and that's still not enough to pay for the first year, even with the half rate. Like that's know, so crazy to me. Oh, Avery, and earlier in the interview, you talked about how the claustrophobia of being at home with your family. <laughs> and, <you're, laughs> and now I'm staying at home for the next four years. I know. Well, my sisters are moving out soon, so. It's okay. it might be some different space. Yeah. But it's interesting how economics kind of pushes you in a certain direction in a way if you yeah. want to get certain degrees. I was even talking about, like, maybe going to, like, the dorms because, like, just to get like that experience and to like meet a lot of new people. Yeah. But it's so expensive. It's like fifteen grand just to do that. Yeah, residence life. But it it is part of the education. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. all kinds of stories. And for you, Dylan? Um, well, I just got accepted to Stu, so I'm gonna go there in the fall. Um <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do like a part have a part time job also, just like pay for all the expensive and i'm i'm gonna live at home too because it's like a five minute walk yeah from my house to campus so yeah. so you got some direction sort of floating in front of you yeah. what happens after high school yeah i'm doing my degree in the arts mm -hmm. so. is it open-ended first year you're just going to explore different things yeah i want to do my first like one of the classes i know i want to do is like fine arts so it's like dramatic arts like theater arts things like that and then i also want to do um social injustice hmm. like a class in that because 
as mom says, I have a hard head for that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, you're starting to figure out what draws you or what really mm-hmm. interests you. So social yeah. justice issues for you. Yeah. And you? Mm-hmm. Well, you've already mentioned kinesis and then getting into meds. So. Yeah. That's kind of been my plan for like five years. I haven't really... Do you know where it comes from? Do you know where... where no. A voice in your head goes, Avery, you're I, going. like, saw, I feel like I, like, my mom used to watch, like, a lot of doctor shows. Like, constant, wow, like. you can't get away from them on television. No, so, like, I would, like, go downstairs and just see all these, like, doctors and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, that looks kind of fun. And, like, that's so cliche because, like, that's how everyone does that. But <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's what I look. And then I, like, kind of, like, did some research about it. And I was like, oh, like, like that's, this could be kind of cool. And then my sister got into nursing, and I was like, oh, like, more uh, medicine, like, cool. So it's all around you in a way. Yeah. And what about the social justice stuff? Because sometimes there's things that make us angry or frustrated. <laughs> I was going to say pissed off. <laughs> you know, oh, and, but that's a motivator, right? And, yeah. and there's some good that can come from that. So do you have something that sparked you that, no, I... I got to get at that. There's something in me that's got to get at that. Mostly just like the way schools teach, especially younger children, about black history. That was one of my biggest points of like, I really want to talk about this because it's not that they're doing it wrong. It's just there's more effective ways to teach younger children about history without numbing it down to water. I think they're doing like, it wrong. Yeah, because it's like they're basically going well, like, these people did some really terrible things to these people, and there was a big fight. It's, like, it wasn't that simple. It was years and years of, like, slavery. It's, like, (laughs) but they don't use words like that because they don't think the children can handle it. But it's, like, I think it's so important that, like, especially because this will be our next generation of kids coming up in the world. Like, I think it's so important that you, like, educate these kids, like, properly, like, be, like, this is what happens and this is what we need to do in order for it to not happen again and I feel like that's just like such a key key point in making yeah. like society better like do you think we, yeah do you think we've gotten too soft absolutely definitely like I think we failed I really think we failed like even like our generation teaching black like, yeah like now like black history month was last month yeah like I don't like I barely heard anything in my school about it like, there was a presentation, a brief presentation. And, like, an announcement. But they didn't give it, they didn't offer it to all classes, only English classes um, and um, gender, media, and culture classes. And, like, that was pretty much it. Yeah. That was the extent And I think that's went. embarrassing. Because, yeah. like, even when I was young, like, I didn't really learn. Like, yeah, it was Black History Month. I did, like, maybe a project on one. Mm-hmm one figure and like that was it like you like that was like that's not enough like I don't really know like it's even now it's kind of embarrassing for me to admit like I still don't know like Mm -hmm. the things I probably should know like but it's hard to get access to it exactly like I mentioned names like Harriet Tubman and like some of my friends are like what what did she do and it was like and the only reason "Ah." I probably know her is because (laughs) I did a project on her exactly and it's like growing up especially for me in like a majority like, it's a majorly white society, sure. and it was, like, there was maybe one other black kid in my fifth grade class in elementary, so it was kind of like, nobody here looks like me, yeah. <laughs> type yeah. of thing. Which is an interesting thing, because in one way, it doesn't matter, Yeah. and in another way, it's really important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I'd also, I think that's where, like my curiosity stemmed from it's like if this then this like what ifs type of thing Mm -hmm. um like i don't know i feel like that is just it's always been like a big factor in my life and played a big part in it and like what i do and how i speak to people and like how i like choose to present myself to people type of thing so yeah yeah Yeah, it's and much like um, clothing or other stuff, if people would just accept, you know, exactly. like there is a path through all this stuff, but it gets all cut up somehow, some way. Yeah. So a social justice thing, that'll, that'll be an interesting 
drum to pound on yeah. for a while. <laughs> the um, when wandering into that space, does it ever cross your mind about indigenous culture too? Yeah. Like, because I imagine if the school had little about Black History Month, month, do they have anything around indigenous culture or that we're all, you know, we're all treaty people and we're all on unceded territory of the Wollaston? At our school, because there are those resources, there's more. Wow. But at the same time, there's not enough. No. Even like, like, I think it was like, the end of last year when they started discovering like all those like children like all those bodies like Mm -hmm. we still didn't get like they planted flowers in front of our school like okay like i want like information like i want like like how like what like why is this all like like, yeah like you kind of know like residential schools you kind of know like what happened like you know like the baseline but like i don't actually know like anything yeah like i uh, for me, like, in classes, like, history class, like, we would skim over, like, those types of things. Mm-hmm. Like, there would be, like, on the exams, you might see, like, two or three questions about it, and that would be max for, like, their cultural representation. And it's on, literally like, just, like, I think, like, the whole curriculum is so soft now. Yeah. Like, even when we learned about, like, the Holocaust, like, my teacher, like, like, I loved my history teacher, but, like, he, like, was, like, like some of the things he was, like, oh, like, that's, like, kind of, like, hard to hear, like, that's, like, really hard to watch and, like, learn about, and I'm, like, yeah, but it happened, like, we should probably learn about it so we don't do it again, like, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's wander into that thing about being soft a little bit, Um, because when working with kids, especially at Green Hill Lake Camp, or Mm -hmm. maybe you see some of it when lifeguarding, but you're not kind of in an instructor position. Oh, yeah, I instruct, too. Yeah, okay. The, um... There's ways of accepting that a human, whether they're five years old, 10 years old, or 50 years old, have the resilience to handle like the tougher stuff or the harder stuff, but we don't kind of expose them to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the extreme, of course, would be about death. So we don't talk about death every day so that mm-hmm. we know that we're alive every day because those two things wind together. We know that, no, that goes over there. Similarly, oh, you're black, that goes over there. Oh, you're yeah. indigenous, that goes over there. Yeah. You know? And, and it's softened us, softened us up some way because we think, oh, I have to protect you from that or coddle mm-hmm. you from that rather than we're going to throw you in and we're going to help you swim we're not going to let you drown. Yeah. But, so how would you go about changing that then? I wouldn't necessarily throw a whole bunch of kids in like the deep end and be like, here's no, what no. happened. I was having fun. Yeah. <laughs> but... But at the same time, those kids are capable of handling a lot yeah. more than what they're being challenged with. Yeah, like, with. I think if you gave kids the opportunity, they'd really surprise you in what they can actually handle. Because I think it's, I think it's, like, more, it's less, like, people are scared of, like, kids not understanding. And it's more of, like, adults, like, some adults are scared of kids knowing Yeah. kind of thing. Like, it's not, like oh, my kid can't handle this, it's, oh, no, I can't handle my kid knowing this type or, of like, thing. Or, like, even, like, I find, like, when, like, a kid learns about something, they want to know everything about it, you exactly. know? Exactly. Like, dinosaurs, you teach them one dinosaur, they want to know all the dinosaurs. So yeah. it's, like, you teach them this one thing, they want to know everything about it. And, like, some people, like, if, like, like you said, like, parents or things just aren't ready to have that conversation. Yeah. And I think that's where it really, like, divides from, like, what I want my kid to know and what they should know. Yeah. Like, and, and not to wander it too far off, because it's the same theme about the parents' influence on what the kid's exposed to, which is what parents are supposed to do. But you also recognizing that they can handle a lot more. Yeah. So the whole bit about sexuality and curriculum and when to teach and when not to teach, and mm-hmm. all, that, that one would be like a firestorm for yeah. who gets to do what and who gets to say what. And But at the same time, kids are naturally curious. Mm-hmm. They will absorb the information in their own particular way exactly so you're thinking that we could be doing a, a lot i'm not saying about sexuality because that thing runs through the media every three or four years there's a shift in the curriculum a bunch of parents get upset because they have these values these parents have these values mm-hmm. meanwhile the kids are kind of stuck not knowing you know yeah. knowledge is power or knowledge is protection yeah, yeah. looking at these devices <laughs> choo, 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 choo. yeah so in that wave of information, how do you get 
to where you would like to go, that they they got it. They understood that it was this harsh for the Holocaust, or this is what black kind of means, or a fuller yeah. understanding of it, or yeah. a fuller understanding of indigenous. H- how do we temper that kind of important grounding information with the deluge of all the information that comes at us? I think if you give it to them in, like, bits and pieces, like, you don't have to, like, sit down with them all in one day and be like, this happened then, this is what, this is that, yeah. da 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 type of thing. I think if you sit down and you have, a, like, a conversation, like, like in pieces. So if you wanted to, let's say, it was Black History Month and you wanted to, like, introduce, like, slavery, don't just be like, Slavery was awful and people died because of it. Like, don't. Like, That's literally like, how we were taught, though, yeah. which is insane. It, which And that just kind of made us all go, like, okay. What the heck? And we yeah. didn't like, learn anything yeah. else. Like, Meanwhile, the American economy was built on slavery. Exactly. exactly. So it's like, and, like, it's like we, take the time I didn't to explain know that. that. Like, be like, so this is how it happened. These are, like, the influencers who really, like, changed the way people thought. This is when it ended. Like, stuff like that. Like, and you don't... stuff they don't teach us, exactly. which is so it's important. Like, it's like, when I was in grade, like, three, me being, like, the only black person in the class, sitting down at this, like, Black History Month presentation, if you can call it that, with, like, this black speaker at the front, and, like, he wasn't from Canada. Like, he was from, I'm pretty sure, like, Nigeria is where he was from originally. And he had these beautiful drums. Like, it was great. And, like, the presentation was amazing. But he had an accent. And so, you know, after the presentation, he was like, well, where's your accent? Why don't you talk like that? Why don't, why don't do you, do you do drums? And it's like, no, because I was raised in a white home. Um, yeah. Could you fake an accent? <laughs> not even if I tried. <laughs> like, you could really throw people if you could come up with different voices. Yeah. I do I do a British accent sometimes, and that throws people sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I that like whole yeah. British accent. Yeah. <laughs> nah. But yeah. it's like that whole thing where it's like um, kids have like this set like thought already because of like the lack of information they have on something like oh they see this man with they see this black man with these drums who talks this way that must be how all black people do it and it's like no the lack (laughs) of representation exactly like yeah like the the thing that happened at our school like that it sparked a lot of conversation within like families like within black households where they are from, like, Nigeria or, like, you've gone to some place like that where, like, it's very different from, I don't know, like, let's say, like, Atlanta or something. Mm -hmm. And, like... NDG in Montreal. Exactly. Like, (laughs) it's, like, there's all these different variations of what people think are is, like, black. But it's, like, you can't really put, like, one label on it because it's such, like... A variety like I have a friend who's from Nigeria and when she's at school she talks like how I'm talking right now but when she's at home with her parents <laughs> she has an accent because that's the way that sure. they do it in their house and yeah. like I think it's so hard to be like hey kids this is what all black people do it's like no um <laughs> yeah and, and your story echoes what i've learned from indigenous cultures so they'll think first nations and they think sameness yeah see no there's like i don't know how many tribes exactly. in in new brunswick to, and there isn't just first nation there's those that aren't part of it mm-hmm. and it gets complex within two questions you go yeah. two questions deep goes tuk, tuk, and like, oh this is the way it really is from their point of view exactly and i think like that's so important that we like teach our kids like it's not just, you can't just put, like, you can't just hear black or First Nations or Asian and put them all in one box. Because mm-hmm. it's like, it's there's not one box. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you can't, like... Be nice if your generation can take us there. Yeah. My, my generation's stuck. <laughs> they built the boxes. <laughs> you know? They need to stop building the boxes. Yeah, I feel like, and it also goes for, like, white people as well. Like, you can't just put all white people in one box. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't Which have is... one bad experience and be like, Ah, no, all white people are like that. Like, that's not fair. Or, like, ah, I find that's a really big thing with gender. Like, men. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, men are horrible, but so are women. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, we're all really horrible people. 
But, like, I find, like, especially going back to the TikTok, like, people will be like, this man, like, 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 hit me in the face one time. Like, fuck all men. Sorry, I don't know if I want to swear okay. on here. <laughs> like, freak all men. Like, like they can't hit, like, they're like, that's it. Like, I'm done with men. And I'm like, hey. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. No, but, like, like also, good <laughs> But, like, oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, like, also, like, there's a lot of different men in this world. Exactly. It's hard that way, isn't it? Exactly. Because yeah. yep. it's, like, I feel like it's also that thing of, like, trust. And, like, once your trust has been worn so thin, it becomes, like, hard to go back to, to be, like, well, this happened twice when I was with a man, so I don't think I should do it again. But it's Which also, is, like, it's reasonable. Sad. But it's like, reasonable, but it's so sad because then it's, like, that is, it's, yeah. it's hard. It's, like, a hard thing to say because you don't want to, like, take away from any woman's experience of, like, sexual assault or, like abuse or anything like that but it's like you're also silencing all the men who have been sexually assaulted or like abused which is like it's such a hard thing because you don't want to offend anybody you don't want to be like like yeah your story is important but this guy had this happen to him too it's like but there's not it's like it's not like there's a there's not a but it's like Mm -hmm. this happened to you but and this also happened to him Mm -hmm. so like you can't <laughs> put it on a. I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, it, it it's hard, scale, right? Because yeah. we don't have the frames or the language yet exactly. to do it. Um, this is fun for me to hear because <laughs> it's it's a, something I have dealt with and lived through for 30 some odd years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it gets personal for me too. So it's interesting because anytime I try to speak up as an equal, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, you had your experiences and I've got my experiences. It always gets shouted down because mm-hmm. of my gender. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, like, <laughs> and, so not fair. And, and my boys, um, my twin boys that are now 30. Yeah. And, uh, but when they were in high school taking that personal development course, and they went to Fredericton High as well, um, the lady who was the teacher was in her mid to late 20s, and they get into the, the sexual abuse part of the curriculum. And all the posters through the school showed... Um, the girl cowering and the boy threatening Mm -hmm. multiple different things and my guys were taught to speak up just like you guys speak up and they got shouted down in class when they tried to speak up about their experiences Mm -hmm. as an equal and they weren't taking anything away like you weren't Mm -hmm. we're not taking anything away from your experience but i've got almost the same experience yeah but for some reason when the guy says it that's denied exactly it's like no you couldn't have so, yeah. But so. And I think media ha- plays a, a big role in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the way it's portrayed on like the media. Like, I'm not saying I like fully agree with everything like that people are saying. Like the, oh, um, not all men but all women. Like uh-huh. I agree with that. This is gonna sound so bad. Like the about? like the not all. It's not m- all men, but it's most men. Is that what you're talking about? No, like the. It's not all men, but it's all women. It's a catchphrase? It's like, in t- in it's terms like a hashtag. Of, so it gets into the percentages of u- abuse, right? Yeah. It yeah. gets into like all women have experienced or 95% of women have experienced abuse at some point in their life, right? Yeah. But men- like, and I feel like that has such something to do with like this like negative stigma around like feminism and like what it really represents. Yeah, I don't think anyone actually for. knows. What no, because like, it's like... I get it. Like, it's such a hard concept to understand for some people because, like, most, like, a lot of people that I've talked to personally have been, like, they hear the word feminism and they're, like, oh, no, that's for girls. Like, like, oh, no, guys can't, guys can't do that. Like, no. And it's, like, but you can't. Like, it's not, like, even a substitute teacher that I had in my gender, media, and culture study, he didn't say, he, like, he said... I don't think I'm a feminist because, like, I don't know, like, what that fully entails. Like, because, like, I can't be a feminist because of my gender. And it's, like, everybody in the class, you could kind of just see them going, like, what? Did anyone speak up? <laughs> yeah, like, um, one person in the class was, like, well, you can because it's, like, it's feminism doesn't have a gender. It's fighting for equality for all genders. Yeah, and I think that's where it gets really mixed up because it's called feminism. Exactly. Which I find 
which I like, don't think boys it don't want to be like I'm a feminist, you know? Exactly. Like they think that's weird, and it's not. It's, it's like it's not because it, it, it's just a word, but it's like it also. <clears throat> yeah, like I wouldn't want to be called like. I don't know, like a male like, Mas- yeah. mas- like, masculinist. <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's like there's like I have a lot of guy friends and they're like, Yes, I want equality, yes, I want girls to get paid the same as guys, yes, I like I want all this stuff, but I'm not a feminist. And I'm like, that's that's you like you are though. That's like pr- almost the definition. <laughs> like, yeah. Or or can we drop the label? Are, yeah. are we to the point where we can drop the label? Well, I always... In the third wave of feminism... Sorry, I was learning about this in class the Do other it. day. Do it. But in the third um, wave of feminism, they dropped the label. They, like... They, they, it wasn't feminism. It was just people fighting for equality. Yeah. Like, it, there wasn't <clears throat> a specific title for it. Yeah, it wasn't gender-focused. Exactly. Yeah, so it becomes humanist. Exactly. Yeah. There was a... Backstory. There was a show, um, television show, talk show kind of thing, not unlike this. Um, the guy tends to be provocative out of the States. Um, Bill Maher is his name, Real Time with Bill Maher. He's still on. But he had Erica Young on, who was a diehard feminist from the 70s. And he had, your guys' talk reminds me of this, so I'm bringing it up. And he had this beautiful black man with this amazing suit. Dude looked good. Um, can't remember what he was, but he never got any airtime. <laughs> and then he had a young lady on who was the new uh, producer or um, editor-in-chief of Mademoiselle magazine, like one of those big magazines. Well, those two women argued back and forth on the very thing you guys just talked about. The new generation young lady was going, I don't need the labels anymore. You guys have paved the path for me. I'm running a big magazine. We've got millions in distribution. I employ 200 people, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so thank you for the road work you laid down for us. And the older feminist took her to task on everything. You can't say that. You can't. So those two fought crazily because the older feminist couldn't accept that something had been achieved yeah. and still needed to fight the fight. Exactly. And the younger one at one point went, I'm going to leave if you don't stop verbally abusing me on this television show. And once in a while, Mar would point to the black guy to see if he wanted in on it. And he's just, mm, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going there. And that, that show was like 20 years ago. Yeah. So maybe you guys will help get us over the hump of what the next iteration looks like. And it doesn't yeah. need the same labels. Do you have any thoughts what you would tell your 25 or 30-year-old self as you start off on your next journey, transitioning out of high school and into whatever comes next? I think everybody needs to learn not to care. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I yeah. Not yeah. to care. <laughs> like yeah. like care enough that it's like you're passionate about what you're talking about, but don't care enough to put other people down for things like that's none of your business. Or even just like the simple things like <laughs> like I walk out of the house and I'm like, "Oh my god, like I hope people like my outfit today." Like I don't care actually. Like I actually don't care what they think. Mm-hmm. But like for some reason I do. Like, I don't know, that's so messy, but it's, like... Mm-hmm. But it is messy. Yeah, and it's, exactly. like, like or, like, the shoes I'm wearing. Like, I like in 30 years from now, I'm not going to care what shoes I was wearing right now. Like, I really no. won't. Like, mm-hmm. I shouldn't care about it. Like, I care about things way too much, and I think I just need to, like, like take a step back and be, like, like none of these things, like, actually matter. Like, to care about the things that, like, are important to you. Like, yeah, like, family, like, whatever. But, like, like little things like that, like... It doesn't actually matter. Like, no. like 10, 15 years from now, I'm going to be like, okay, like, I don't even remember that pair of shoes. Like, yeah, I don't even, like... like uh, but, they, <laughs> but it goes into making a day. It goes into having positive energy in yeah. a day. Yeah, what, To riff on that a little bit, when someone gives you a compliment, um, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I, I don't know how to take compliments very <laughs> well, so... <laughs> oh, good. We're going to make Dylan embarrassed now. We're going to rain it down. I, I don't know. It's Dylan, like, you look so nice today. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like things like that. It's like, oh, <laughs> Oh, it's just like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to go. But it's true, eh? It's hard to accept a compliment yeah. sometimes. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> like, I get, like, the whole process of being nice to people, like, even if you don't know them. Like, just being like... You have really, like, I love your hair today, or I like this, but, like, I get that, but it's, like, at the same time, like, I can do it, Yeah. but when it's given back, it's, like, oh. But I think a lot of times it's, like, people, yeah. like, re- like, rely on, like, that kind of validation. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you're going out and you're going to be, like, I hope people, like, really, like, like, I want, like, 
like especially social media like you post on social media like I want people to like this I want people to like comment and tell me I'm pretty like stuff like that and it's like like that's like sometimes for people that's like a make or break of your day like the validation of other people and I think that's really messed up because that sparks the same parts in your brain that like getting a win on like a video game or doing cocaine gives you like that's like it's the (laughs) same parts of your brain that light up so it's like I think it all really just connects cocaine often no, what? <laughs> no, it's just video games. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, I feel like it just all connects to social media and how much it's really influenced this particular, like Avery and I's generation particularly. This I think era. it, like, yeah, I think it's hmm. really influenced the way we see the world and the way we think and the way we talk and the way we like hold ourselves and like yeah. go to date, go on to date to day activities and yeah. stuff like that. To wrap up, sort of a fun one. Um. What would make you guys happy? What is happy for you guys? (laughs) I don't know. Get as personal as you want, Dylan. Um, (laughs) No, I'm joking. I don't know. Um, Because, I mean, there's all the obvious things, you know, good health, family's okay, all that stuff. But I mean that, that fun joy. What is it that happens in a day that makes you just feel light? Like when you're having a really good day and you're... So is it playing defense and making an interception? Is it um, singing note for note your favorite song and you got it? Is, I think is it's it... like the tiny little things. Like, yeah. Like small little things. Like like I drove to school and my playlist was so good this morning. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm happy the rest of the day. Or it's like things like when, like, I don't know, if you have like a significant other or like something like that, just like the little like the littlest compliment or like the littlest like oh hey good morning like that it's just yeah. like for the rest of the day it's like, like they opened your door for you like thanks yeah it's like like it's like the littlest things that like but at the same time <laughs> when you think about that that's like like bare minimum yeah like the like like compliment the utter me. bare minimum of like sometimes like the bare minimum from like people is like also like the best feeling like, but it's like embarrassing that I think today, <laughs> no, listen to this today, like today, because of like social media and stuff, I think relationships get so messy now because like, mm. I don't want to like, f- like when my parents started getting together, like certain things, like my dad used to buy my mom a rose every single month, like just like a single rose, like he would just buy that. And like, that's like so cute. Right. That's and like, so cute. <laughs> right and if you see that on the internet you're like oh my gosh that's so cute but then you look back and you're like oh but I'm not getting a rose and I think yeah. like that you like I think everyone's love language is so different and like yeah. like guys are like 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 when I was with Daniel like he would do different things for me that I would have to realize and be like that's his way of showing like that his he affection. loves me instead of like like getting a rose like some people it's like buying things like and you see all these things on internet it's like these people are getting roses this guy made a cake for her like this and like yeah. I, and then it's like like why is... don't i get that exactly and but then like, at the same time it's thing. like i am getting that just in different it's ways different and way, it's really yeah. hard to like especially your if you're dating over like social media or like <laughs> exactly. yeah. social media, which is like oh it's such a weird thing but yeah i don't know like happy just see it just seems like Honestly, like, a really nice day just laying in the sun with, like, my favorite music and a book and, like, a good, like, no school hot work. chocolate or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, That would be, like, my happy place. Like, that, that yeah. for me, would be, like, uh, like, <laughs> just doing nothing. But also, like, being on the basketball court and being, like, in my basketball sneakers, that's also, like, happy for me. Like, because, like, I like being active and i like playing with avery and hannah like that's like something i'm gonna miss oh yes you do (laughs) (laughs) like that's something that's like you know or like (laughs) yeah that's something that like makes me feel like that type of like happy like effortless happy though yeah it's like i don't have to try hard for that type of happiness like it's just it just comes with being with like those certain people and i think if you surround yourself with the right people you'll find yourself being effortlessly happy often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a perfect spot to end. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Yeah, it was great. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Thanks so much to Dylan and Avery for sharing their thoughts, their feelings, and their hearts. 
Future looks good, doesn't it? In the hands of these two and those like them. Thanks for watching. If you like the work we do, please go to the website, click on Patreon or PayPal and support the show. It is an independent media production. Counting on you. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. We should.